Top of the morning to you folks, it's Johnny Valentine with Gain Solar. I'm headed to another undisclosed location. And uh, I just gotta run here to quick trip one real quick. If it wasn't for quick trip, I wouldn't get by. But uh gonna go meet Abraham. We're gonna be changing out a older system that had some just had some jack leg electrical work. We're gonna clean it up. We're also gonna be chopping in a solar arc and uh, getting this customer EMP hardened, getting him to a maintenance free battery bank. It's gonna be awesome. And we are gonna be hardening the grid on this remote mountain farm in the beautiful Appalachians. This, uh, this place has already got a system in place, as you can see in the background. This is the current setup. This was touted as a uh, professional solar installation. The batteries were professionally installed. This was the Magnum professionally installed with all the disconnects and breakers in place, or the lack thereof. Has she said what's going to happen to this unit? And we know not the future of the unit. The batteries, however, are destined, destined to become part of the circle of life we like to be known as Scrapyard. I just noticed this. This is a sweet little move. We call this the uh, call this quarter round. This is called two up quarter round right here. Just do it like that right there. Put it, put a trim nail in it. Looks good. It hides the gap. That's where you do your if you do your baseboard high enough, you can mount your uh, battery cables. Run your battery cables under your baseboard like that. It's a real nice look. All right, guys, I'm going to show you a quick explanation of the uh, way this guy did it. And first thing I want you to know is he was a blue wire nut man. That's all I'm going to give you for that one. All right, anyway, they got their feed to the Magnum. They're feeding 40 amps to the number eight wire, which is oversized, but whatever. And then he's coming through here, and then he's got his wire nuts, and he's feeding power to the Magnum input which is right here, these two wires. And then he's also spliced this 40 amps and he's feeding to one side of this interlock. So this is basically his bypass assembly or his transfer switch. And it's UL listed, as you can see, because it's like attached onto this thing. This is a nice little assembly, but it's confusing. So basically what he can do is, in normal operation, he's feeding grid power through to the AC input side of the Magnum. The minute power goes out, the Magnum is going to power the terminals on this, on the AC input breaker to this panel. Or if you bypass it, it's going to pass grid power right through. But normally the Magnum, you know, if you have it in, you know, depending on what mode you have, it's either going to power this off the battery or it's going to power these terminals off the uh, passing grid power through, depending on how the relay is in the Magnum, whether it's closed or not. But this is a confusing little setup, and this doesn't really do what we want in Solar. So we're about to change this out. So another reason we're doing this is there is literally no way to unplug the battery or disconnect the battery, and there's literally no way to remove the solar from the system without doing a spark. So we're gonna go ahead and do that one first, and Abraham's gonna have a spark. How scared are you right now? I'm not too scared. Not too scared? No. Do you think there's going to be a spark? Personally, I think there's going to be a spark. Yeah. Two by four would be no nice for that. No oh, spark. no spark. Charge controller now is... What are you trying to charge, charge controller? Now she's just taking in solar. She thinks she's still hooked to a battery. What in the world are you charging? Now we gotta figure out how to turn the solar off because it's... No disconnect on that either. So in our journey to figure out how to disconnect the solar, we found the best part. We don't wanna unplug the panels because they're under load and if we unplug the panels that will spark the connectors and the connectors won't work very good. We don't have a giant quilt. You don't happen to have a giant Amish quilt, do you? Fresh out. We have no quilt. 
And um, if we unplug the power from the charge controller, we'll spark the charge controller and we'll damage that. So we're gonna go ahead and do the old, undo the blue wire nuts. He was a blue wire nut man till the day he died. Okay, so he's also using this as a combiner, just to be clear. He's combining his two strings. <sighs> I wish we had a disconnect. There's not a disconnect anywhere? Dang it. He pulled one inch too. <laughs> Son of a gun. I got some pliers that uh, I don't care a lot about. Those are your brand new ones, dude. I, got, I found my old pair. Okay, brace yourself for arc flash. Okay. It's probably not going to be that bad. 10-4. Mm, I would cut that with some linesmen that I didn't care about. I need another pair. Oh, that wasn't that bad. All right, now you should put these back together. Did you hear the... Did, did the you put them back together? Don't put them back together. Why? That's them all apart. Okay. Yeah, do that. Alright. They're not going anywhere. Yeah, the charge controller just clicked. Let's yeah. see what it says. It's off! Okay. You turned it off. Alright. See how he ran his ground screw into his... This is a neutral bar. These are both neutral bars. If you want this to be your main panel, you can run the ground screw in and it bonds the neutral in the ground. But in every sub panel, after the first point of neutral ground bond, you're supposed to have a separate ground bar. So he had sense enough to put a ground bar in, but he still ran the ground screw in and made the ground, neutral bar a ground bar. But he knew how to use blue wire nuts, right Abe? Twist and tie. Well, it's just about time to get back to work. Abraham. Abraham. Wake up, we gotta work. Lunch time's over. Guys, you may find yourself asking yourself, what is a transfer switch? This is the transfer switch. And what it does is it makes a transfer from one thing to another. These knife blades, they move up and down. So this is something we're using. We're using this as a bypass. Basically, power goes out from there, and then you have two different power sources you can put in on these two terminals. So in this condition, or in this situation, we've got Solark's output power going in from our Solar battery backup inverter feeding this side. We've got grid feeding this side, and then right here in these middle lugs, we're feeding this critical load panel. So what this allows us to do is transfer between the grid and the solar and bypass our system if there's ever a problem. Just using this as a bypass. This was the bypass before, but it was labeled inverter back feed. Nobody knew what it did. Nobody understood how it worked, and it was just sketchy. This is just a sketchy way of doing it. I mean, it's, it is locked on here, and you all listed, but it, I just don't like it. And it takes up a bunch of room in this little bitty critical load panel they put in. So we got the transfer switch in. We got the solar arc up. Abraham's running and gunning. Are you running and gunning? Oh, yeah. Was that piece long enough? Yeah. Nice. Abraham is super stoked about our, our digs. So a big thanks to Orchard Lake Campgrounds. If you guys haven't ever been to Orchard Lake Campground in Saluda, it's an awesome place. We stay here, this is our, we've stayed here before, no, have I ever stayed here before? I've been here for all the, the prepper camps, but this is my first time uh, staying here. So Abraham is very excited about our habitations. Trying to get these chickens out of here. All right guys, so we got, oh look at that, we got lights. So we got a lot of work done yesterday. We got the uh, wire way up. We've got that's going to an outdoor disconnect for the utility. And today we're hoping to rewire the solar array, put the batteries in the rack, and get the system up and running. All right, so now we're up under here. We're fixing to rewire the solar array. The solar array was originally wired for strings of three. That's how you have to do charge controllers. So you're operating around yeah, 90 volts with these panels. These are like 30 volt panels. That's how I view a grid tie panel. So we're gonna rewire it into strings of six. There's 12 panels. And that's gonna get me higher voltage. Higher voltage means less voltage drop, right? The faster the electricity is moving or the voltage of the electricity. So it's a lot better to have 
16, 18 amps on a number 10 wire moving at 180 volts than it is to have close to, see it had, it had uh, four strings before, so that, so with four strings before he had mm, close to 40 amps and that was running on a, uh, doing this math off the top of my head, but he was running about 90 volts. So what we're trying to do here is get this thing up into the solar arc operating voltage, but we're also gonna gain some efficiency by uh, going to a higher voltage. While I'm at it, I'm also gonna be just adding PV wire clips in it. Got a lot of different wiring clips. This is kind of how I carry my wiring clip box. Got all my different PV wire clips, which I'll show you. We're gonna do that, and we're also putting on ferrite cores on all the modules so that we can uh, put the EMP suppression on this thing. So this is an old school and questionable move. Didn't have some zip ties, I reckon, so we just went ahead and wrapped the cable. But you know, if he was doing this on this job, he must have been doing it on the roof too, which is a little bit freaky. So we are gonna also clean up the cable management on this job, it's pretty, pretty weak. But good thing is it's a ground mount, so you don't have to worry too much about service nightmares on ground mounts. And this is the jumper. So I'm just about totally done with zip ties. Uh, these are what we're using on all the panel clips. These are specially made to go onto the panel frame. And that holds the wire really nice. One more thing to mention too, guys, is people are always talking about efficiency and like, oh, I hear this. This is the question I hear all the time. Don't you lose efficiency when you go really long distance? Or don't you don't you have a have a lot of efficiency loss? It's called voltage drop, and it's a factor of how thick the wire is, how high the voltage is, and how many amps are on there. So, uh, if you use a big enough wire, you're not going to have voltage drop. Or if you go to high enough voltage, you're not going to have voltage drop. And uh, the power grid's a perfect example of that. They got power going for miles and miles and miles, but it's traveling around at 14,000. And I don't know what their voltages are, their primaries, but it's a lot. So. Think about the upsize of the wire or you go up in voltage. This is only maybe a couple hundred feet, so it's not that big of a deal. I'd rather push it push it forward than drive a Chevy. Alright guys, so we're just about done with this job. The solar arc is making power. It's not making a ton because as always when we finish a job, the sky is overcast, so we don't always get to see it do it. But uh, we've got the solar array rewired, so we rewired the solar array in just two strings of six. So we got higher voltage there, and then we added a DC disconnect, which I'll show you right here. There's the DC disconnect we added. So now they can turn the system, the DC side off. They can also turn it off at the solar arc. I'll take you in, I'll show you the uh, electrical now. Here's the solar arc, it's in limited power to home, so it's not making a whole lot of power right now, 500 watts, but it is, you can see those battery voltages I was talking, or those, uh, I was telling you it was going to be at 180 volts, there's 170, 169, so you can see what the solar's doing, and then the solar's mostly just putting power on the battery right now, and the grid is uh, passing through. So these are cool, this, this system, you know, we don't have to come in here and do all this interconnection stuff, we just come in and put it in limited power to home, we CT the mains, and it sees how much power the house is using, and when there is power, it's gonna offset what it can. The solar, they've only got about 3,500 watts of solar here, but uh, it's a nice little backup power system, and it's got plenty of big battery in it. But guys, I'm not gonna wade into the bush again. I've spent plenty of time in the bush, but you can see we installed a utility disconnect next to the meter now, so now the customer can disconnect the system or the utility. Now if the customer wants to be grid tied, they've got that utility disconnect into place. If they ever want a grid tie, they can uh, easily have that. And that's also, now they have a PV disconnect. So if they want to work on the system, they're able to turn the solar circuit off at the house. So, so there's that double bank of the full river batteries. It's two 400 amp hour banks. They're in series parallel, so you got one string there, one string there. The inverter cables are pulling off of negatives, pulling off of that string. 
and the positive is pulling off of that string, so that causes power to have to go all the way through the battery bank. Uh -huh. If you were to hook it right there and there, you would unequally charge. Here's our solar converter. She's got all her disconnects now. She's got a battery disconnect. She's got a straightforward bypass. Critical load panels labeled. We've got our solar circuit piped in EMT so that it's protected since it's a DC circuit. And I feel like the system's cleaned up. It's working good. It's afternoon, but she's still making power. We got her in limited power to load, so she's offsetting her usage, but she's not pushing back. This prepper's prepped. 